Hello and welcome to the Slingshot channel. It's raining outside, that's perfect for an indoor project and it has to do with this little collector's item. Let me show you its features. This is the man in black noisy cricket. It is a little gun that is really really powerful although it is tiny. It's kind of a joke in the movie and I love it because it looks super cool. It looks cool and of course it also has some functionality but it is not shooting. Well, what you can do is you can cock back the hammer and then you hear this chirping sound until then <laughs> it goes off with a uh, disappointingly weak bang. But it is a fun toy and you can repeat this as often as you want. As cool as it is, it's also quite expensive. I mean, this is still between four and five hundred dollars, I guess, which is a little stiff for most people that would just like to have it for playing around. So, I'll show you how to make one at home. And here is my little homemade version. As you see, it is not quite as cool as the original, but I think it's still very cute. And it has an advantage, it shoots. You can take a rubber band and put it over the entire pistol, like this. And then you can fire away. <laughs> Great fun. It is really easy to make this. And of course you can also change it, you can customize it any way you want to. So let's begin with the project. <laughs> we begin by finding a piece of plywood or other thin wood. Make sure it's not too warped. And this one is about 4 mm in thickness, but if you have 3 or 5 mm, it doesn't matter. Just as long as it's uh, somehow thin. Next, you download the PDF file and print it out. Make sure that the dimensions are right. I put in a little rectangle for your reference. Then you trace the outlines to your little bit of wood. Uh, you could also alternatively use some glue and put on the entire paper. Saves you some time, but you have to fumble off the paper later on, which is also work. Now it's time for the saw work. I use this one, but you can also use a hand saw, although you have to be very careful because there's some delicate saw work involved and that is not so easy with a normal jigsaw. Next, we glue this piece to one of the other pieces, like this. You can use wood glue if you're patient. I use two minute epoxy because I am not patient. Now for the trigger axis, let's find a nail and also find a matching drill bit so that we can use this as a joint for an axis for this. If put together, the action must work like this. Next, you must take the file and thin out the trigger part as it has to move freely afterwards and therefore we have to make it thinner. So this is done and as you see, I also rounded the trigger a little bit because later it will be hard to do that. Now you have to put it in and when you feel over it, you have to feel the ridges so that it is absolutely clear that the trigger part is a little bit thinner than the uh, surrounding wood. For the next part we need a small spring and I'm typically using a spring from an old pen, like this one. It should be straight, so if it's thickened on one end like this one, just bye bye. Now we can put in our spring and as you see, it works like a charm. Now you have to close the action and uh, you have a choice. You can either use screws 
like I've done this with the first one that I built, which has the advantage that you can service the action later on. But it looks more clean and it also is quicker to just glue it on. If you want to go for the glue solution, now it is possible to check if everything works in the vise. So even in the vise, the entire action must run smoothly and freely. Then you may glue it on. After the glue has set, make sure that the action still works. And then you can saw in or file in this notch. And you need to make it in a way that it is flush with the action. So once you pull the trigger, it needs to close the gap. And otherwise it needs to leave room for hooking in the rubber bands. Next, we want to file it flush. All right, now everything is flush. And at this point, you should be fairly happy with the look of the system itself because it's not going to change much from here on. Now we need to make the barrel. And I'm using these little shashlik pins, <laughs> barbecue pins really, because they are made from nice wood, they're pretty straight and uh, have the right thickness. And of course you have to drill in a hole for these first. So these have about five millimeters of thickness, so you need to get a five millimeter drill bit. Of course, you can leave the barrel as long as you want to. This is some kind of the artillery 08 version of it. <laughs> but um, I, I recommend making it long enough so that you can see if it's straight. It's easier to see the straightness on the longer barrel and then shorten it to your liking. Now we need to put in a notch for the rubber band and I use my saw for this, but you can also use a file. Now sharpen the tip for the cool looks. So this is now already a functional little shooter. Everything that we knew from now on is just for the looks. Functionality is now a given. <laughs> All right, first what we want to have is we want to make this looking like a round barrel. Right now it's just a flat piece and to make around parts for it, I recommend sawing out a piece of uh, the barrel part um, uh, simply because then we can attach the scales and shape them. Now that we have the pieces, we take normal glue, nothing strong, just the cheap stuff for gluing paper and so on, and we put a drop or two onto the thick piece on each side, like this. And we glue on one of the scales. This is temporary only, so we can round everything nicely. Do this with the other side too. Now that the glue has set, we can start filing it round. Okay, that is round enough for now. And uh, as you see, we already filed in the notch for the separation between the front and the rear part. Does look a little obscene, doesn't it? <laughs> Never mind. It is easy enough now to separate the halves because this glue doesn't really do anything permanent. Okay, now we can attach them to the weapon. Just glue them on, make sure that the notches are actually well aligned. Like this, and also that they are in parallel to each other. Now that they are glued on, I recommend removing the barrel and then rounding the whole thing together. As you see, this starts to look convincingly round. Next, we'll make the scales. So transfer the outlines of the scales 
to the wood and saw it out. Now we have to drill holes to this for the screws that we're going to use for the mounting for the original look. And notice that it is important to sink those in so the screw heads won't poke out afterwards. Note that I filed them flush because now it is necessary to remove them again to round them properly. The scales are rounded. Everything is set on. Functional weapon. Now you can start adding as many little details as you want coming as close to the original or to your liking as you want. So as you see each one is a little bit individual. This here is a screwed and this is glued, uh, but still they are basically the same shape and of course they have the same functionality. So as you see it's easy to spray paint these. Um, I decided to spray paint the uh, scales in black and the rest in silver, but of course also the wooden one has a certain charm I think. A certain wood charm. <laughs> anyway, you can win one of these. Just click on the link down below to my forum and you will find a thread and that thread you can simply answer which one you want and make sure that you check again and see if you are the winner and the drawing will happen on the 11th next Sunday. So, <laughs> by the way I'm still waiting for my compressor and some parts for the strongest arrow shooter in the world. <laughs> I'm already at almost 800 joules. But I've already made some more arrows. You know this one with just a nail as a tip. But I also made one where you can attach regular broad heads. Nice and dangerous. And I made a super broad head from uh, old kitchen knives. As you see, these will probably cause some major damage. I'll test them as soon as the compressor arrives. This is the best possible way to watch Man in Black again. And I love to join the action. <laughs> so, I hope you like this. Because that's it for today. Thanks and bye bye. Thank you.